Right, sounds of setting buffer heads. Everyone seemed to be agreed that buffer heads is a bad idea. It was a good idea once, but its usefulness has outlived itself. Right, so we want to get rid of it. The question is how? Problem is that the buffer heads allow for a nice sector size I.O. And what's more, a sector size I.O. of the underlying block device. And this is being used by, well, quite a lot, well, one could say nearly all file systems which have not been converted. So, what can we do there? So essentially there are two roads open which, I've see which I'm seeing currently. The one is replace them entirely with folios, and the other one is to converting buffer height itself to folios. I had done a conversion, or I'm working on a conversion for the FAT file system to switch over to IO map and use folios directly internally. And it seems to be going reasonably well. So anyway, so what would happen if we replace it with folios? So initially, yeah, folios can only do page size IO as it stands now. Meaning, yes, we will get the same data than we used to get but we get, will even get more than that data, namely not only the sector which we looked for, but also the uh, sectors adjacent to it. The question is, does it matter? Because it's a file system, and as the file systems are tightly and tightly packed anyway, chances are that we will be reading the very next block, a block very soon afterwards. So really, hmm, does it really matter? Plus. Well, I.O. performance really isn't that an issue, and I would wager it virtually is impossible to measure whether we read five, uh, 512 bytes or 4K. So really, I personally, I would think, freaking hell, it doesn't matter, just do it. And move to folios would have, it does have the nice advantage that we'll be using the page cache directly, so all this weird buffering the buffer heads do currently internally essentially replace it or redoing some things which the page guys already do can just plainly removed and be done with. That would be good. So, the read side so far is easy. Not so easy is the write side. Because we are, as we're doing sector size IO, we, are sort, we sort of assume we will just write this one sector. When using folio, mm, that's actually not quite true because we will be writing, if we're not doing something special, the entire, uh, the ent entire folio, which is more than a sector. Thankfully, there's a, pa a patch there from Retesh allowing for um, sub-page tracking of the, f uh, of the folio, for, for, write, for, uh, for folio writes. And um, that could easily, I just have a patch that can easily be extended to ju essentially just mark the bits which we actually wrote within that folio as dirty, and then it'll work, surely. <laughs> so um, it's the first time I venture into file system territory, so I just assume, all right, that'll work, go. Um, so that is the approach I'm taking currently. Is that feasible, or does anyone see any issues with that? Get your own mic. Yeah, unfortunately, um, one of the things that uh, is a sticking point will be the, um, the block device cache, the BDEV cache. Um, Which block device cache? BDEV cache, uh, FS uh, uh, BDEV uh, yeah. dot C. So we have a simple uh, file system that basically is used for partition scanning, um, and that um, also really is used is through buffer heads no. for metadata. So file systems that use buffer heads for metadata yeah. will have to use that unless they port over to something else. And it doesn't seem like it might be worth the risk for those file systems to convert over to something different for um, metadata. Um, I, I doubt that that would happen, but I mean, folks are well, so the thing, free the to thing do that. Is that um, it does not need to be a full conversion at this time because um, there's a pitch, uh, helpfully Christoph did a patch set for config out buffer, buffer heads. 
So you can run your entire system without buffer heads. Yes, yes, it, it's certainly possible. It's, it's more of a question of um, file systems that are using uh, certain APIs that Bufferhead provides mm. uh, for metadata I.O. rather than yes. data path. Yes. And essentially, uh, unless they're willing to uh, move over that metadata API somehow to something else that doesn't rely on. That was the next, very next paragraph I was coming to. Yeah, um, because I actually uh, who, um, who would do that work, and and would the file system developers be willing to move over? Right. Okay. So we are trying to move to a new ABI, API, namely replacing buffer, buffer heads with folios. And I guess we sort of all agree so that this is something we want to do. Yeah. So I I actually think we want to replace buffer head with something else which is going to be attached to Folio instead of a page. But there has, I, I believe there has to be some intermediate layer that's kind of generating this. Like, like you are right that buffer heads are ancient by this time and probably what we need today is very much different from what buffer head implants. But also Luis is right that there is some service that still the file systems need Need and to do. There yes, is so benefit so we in don't having have the infrastructure place layer. as of now. Yes, I, I do fully agree with that. We do need a, essentially a dropper in, a dropper in replacement for at least SBB or uh, for SBB read. Uh, yes. Yeah. So, so so it's not not only about reading like blocks for, uh, and yeah without having care yeah. without having to, uh, having to care about the size of the folio, but there is also stuff like uh, you know tracking tracking association of metadata blocks to the inodes, that's also what bufferhead layer does, and file systems use it. So for example, simple file systems like FAT, but, but also ext2 and UDF and other, they, they, use the f they use the possibility to associate bufferhead with an inode, that, that's kind of one of the darker corners of bufferhead. <laughs> Uh, and then on F-Sync, they use this list of metadata blocks to actually... But do we, so, and that, so, thank you. And that was precisely my question. Do we need to care? Because yeah. essentially what we do is we are just dirting individual folios. And as we are having to convert, when we do the conversion, we are having to convert over to write pages. So we can't write on individual pages, at least to my understanding. It might be completely wrong. Again, it's the first time I venture into file system territory, so everything I say here might be completely off topic. So can I go back to your right amplification comment? Yes, please. Because your assumption is that we're basically on a file system that has a large block size, and obviously we have an underlying smaller write size. That's what causes the amplification. Yes. But if the file system is already knows that it's got a large block size and it has to be efficient about filling that block for a write, do we need to care about write amplification? As in, is subpage dirty sector tracking really worth it? Well, um, that, that some, alone, some file systems, that let's call them... Yes. Sorry, that, that alone is not the problem of write amplification. Uh, so write amplification can also happen when you have a larger page size and a smaller block size. Yes. So, you know, somebody went then because if the folio tracks the, the dirtiness at the page size. And if you try to write a 64K where you intend to write only one block of a file system. Yeah, but the point is, if the file system already knows what it's writing in, presumably it's trying as hard as it can to actually fill the whole block. All we have to do is wait for it to finish filling its whole large Unl block size and then write the whole lot back. Uh, unless the file system layout is geared up for 512 blocks, uh, 512 uh, uh, byte blocks, let's call them fat. The layout... Yeah, so no, I seem to... Yeah, so I think I file, file system do block IO. If you modify one, one byte, it's going to do a remodified byte of a single block. The, the issue here is what is the, the relation between the block size and the page size? Yes. If, you, if you can pack multiple blocks into a page, you have right amplification. Yes, but you can't, it cannot always do that because some file systems like FAT work around 512 bytes and you can't that's really the exactly that, you that's the point really in that case your your block size is 512 the page is 4k yeah. you have eight block in a page yeah. you have exactly. to track that exactly you have to track that and you can't really no you so but you you you, you, sh you should actually look at ritesh's okay. patch set because he, he lays it all out pretty well in the cover letter about how he actually yeah. has a not not just a benchmark but an actual like workload which 
suffers greatly from having a 64 kilobyte page size on PowerPC. Yeah, so I think the reality is there is a lot of functionality that is carried by the buffer cache code. Different file systems use different subsets of that buffer cache file system code. Um, sub, sub page dirty tracking is just one aspect of it. Um, and the reality is even if you want to say that you know, all file systems that use block size less than 4K are not worth thinking about, uh, number one, ext4 and ext2 still support 1K block sizes, and we support 2K block sizes for IBM mainframes. Um, but we also have, uh, you know, uh, we also need to support uh, architectures with 64K pages where you want to interoperate with 4K block size because the file system was originally formatted on an x86. So it's complicated. Um, the other functionality which uh, Jan has just mentioned is associating um, dirty buffers with inodes. That is something some file systems use, others don't. Uh, and yeah, if you can convert the entire world to IOMAP, maybe some of that goes away, but that's a pretty big lift. Uh, the other one is uh, file systems that use the JBD2 layer, which include ext4 and OCFS2, and there's a separable question of, you know, how well supported is OCFS2. Apparently there is a maintainer for it, so, uh, but one of the things that we've certainly looked at is, does it make sense to, you know, essentially grab a huge chunk of the buffer cache code that is only needed by JBD2 and essentially moving that into the JBD2 layer. So yeah. instead of buffer heads, we'll have, uh, you know, we already have a journal head structure actually that we layer on top of the buffer head. So we could do something like that. Um, one of the additional complexities, which is probably an ext4 specific thing, is uh, we still have to support user space utilities opening the block device while the file system is mounted and so we have to keep the cache coherent between um, writes to the block device and to, for example, the file system super block. And that is another set of functionalities that the buffer cache gives to us for free. Um, I think the reality is there is value in replacing the buffer head code just simply because it's really, really ancient code, um, even if there are big chunks of that functionality that will still be needed by some file systems. And the challenge is how do we get there, right? It's yeah. gonna be a very, very incremental yeah. uh, replacement. Um, but I do believe that you can't just replace buffer head with folios for metadata blocks. At the very minimum, there will need to be something, maybe we put it in libfs.c, that is a common layer that will be needed by all the file systems yep. that support F-Sync, right? And I don't even know if FAT supports F-Sync, so yeah. Yeah, and I think this is kind of like getting at the main problem here is that like, you know, we all talk about hating buffer heads, but in reality, every file system manages their metadata in a special way. ext4 and JBD and FAT use buffer heads as this like common thing, but like, FlutterFS has extent buffers that we layer on top of, you know, struct page. Currently, it'll be folio, I promise, Willie. Mm -hmm. You know, XF, and then XFS has XFS buff, which is, again, just this extra bit on top of what we need to manage the metadata versus the pages. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that, like, getting rid of buffer heads is, like, the big, huge win that we think it is. And I also don't think that, like, creating a new common thing for all the file systems to use is uh, the other, the, a good answer either. Because again, I, unless you put a gun to my head, I'm not gonna go through and redo all of my extent buffer stuff just to use something common when it it's, just uh, So works. this is not, not uh, it's not about forcing. Right. So at this time, this is for outlining a way how file systems can be converted. Right. So that really is what this one is about. To give users slash maintainers slash newbies, whoever, a way, right, listen, so this is how things could look, how we envision they should look. Go figure whether it applies for, the, for your file system you, you care about. 
Yeah, I mean, I think for those file systems that have something that is not buffer head, so ButterFS, XFS, yes. this won't matter to them. We're no, not going to be changing it, Of course it wouldn't matter. Yeah. But, there, this but is, there's this like for over two dozen simple file systems that are still using buffer heads for metadata, yeah. and there needs to be a common support layer for all of those file systems. Yeah. So. And so what I'm saying is I think that the answer is do all the work inside a buffer head to use folios, and then just everybody that's using buffer heads, they, nothing happens, they can just pretend like the entire world stayed the same, and it changes underneath them, and Willie's happy, and we're happy, and everything is golden. Okay. So I'm going to ask a question about that. Uh, do we want to support large folios yes. with buffer heads? So that depends on the question, how do we go about with buffer heads? If we go the way suggested, as in converting buffer heads themselves to use folios, then the answer is, well, obvious. Yes, of course we would, because then we would have it automatically. Uh, no, no. Ah, right. we, so we, we have a choice. We can choose whether we support single page folios or whether we support multi page folios with buffer heads. Why would we see a difference from buffer heads? Because we have things like maximum number of buffers per page sized arrays on the stack. Yeah, so, because, uh, yeah, so, so my suggestion for that solution is we keep buffer heads simple so it only supports single page folios. And if you want the win of multi page folios, switch to IO map, period. And the file systems that we are talking about, the two dozen simple file systems like VFAT and Amiga DOS FS and whatever the hell, we don't care about performance well, for them, and we don't no. care about large folio support. Well, that, and that is not, not quite true. <laughs> um, so and that is the reason why, I'm, why I chose a, a, a FAT or VFAT as a conversion, because it's not because I like FAT. In fact, no, quite the contrary. Reason is bloody UFI. UFI because that actually requires you to have a phone. Yeah, but UFI is, used, is barely fucking used. Like, nobody gives a shit, because none of these fucking file systems have gigs of page yeah. cache. At right? least some, some distributions are able to boot without uh, VFAT at all and just using system D and E5 VARs. I know Amazon Linux 2003 does that, so it might be an option for distributions to look into that. Okay, I, I, I just want to go back to something. I just want to put an asterisk by, um, I, I saw a lot of nodding when, when, when there was a suggestion of these old file systems are still using buffer heads or are going to support single page folios. Uh, I, I, I just want to put a little bit of an asterisk by it, which is that we do still want to support large block device, uh, large LBAs, LBAs larger than page size. And I, I, so I just want to put an asterisk by single page folios to say the larger of LBA size or page size. So, because for, for, for those, the buffer head will actually represent the entirety of the folio. So they get to still use the same buffer head API, but it happens to represent the entire folio, which is your minimum right size. Yeah. We're, we're, or, block devices are basically already doing conversions from logical sectors to physical sectors. They're never going to dump a block device. They, they tried with 4K block devices and w ran screaming into the woods and went back to 512 byte sectors. So we're never really going to find a block device that cannot handle uh, a sort of a small logical sector size. They'd all like us to do the rights in the physical sector size, which they'll tell us what it is, and if we can sort of shovel down data, they'll be happy. But just for backwards compatibility with ancient Windows devices, they're always going to be, be capable of handling small LBAs, I think. So we're bleeding into Lewis's talk here, and I, I, I think somebody else had a question. So, yeah. so I think that you know the answer here is convert buffer heads to folios, single page for now. If we feel like we need to do something later, we can address it then. And this kind of makes everything better, as well as least painful for everybody. Okay. This, this, this is good. I've learned I don't need to get rid of the uh, max buffs per page uh, arrays on the stack. Fantastic, thanks. 
um, we will have another session for IOMAP, right? So I don't need to go into the IOMAP things. Right, okay, cool. Right, time's up anyway. Thank you.